Trade and Tariffs, the Commerce Department, submitting a report yesterday with the potential to release big tariffs on imported cars and auto parts. President Trump now has 90 days to make a decision on whether to impose those tariffs. On Sunday Morning Futures, Maria spoke with House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy uh, and, and about these U.S. trade progress. I, I want to credit this president because he has really moving against China and making for a level playing field is something that America should have done a long time ago. The entire Western Hemisphere should have been able to do this. But what I find is that we are getting movement to where we need to do to protect our intellectual property rights, to have right. a fair and level playing field when it comes to trade. And I'm seeing good movement. Another round of talks are set to take place in Washington, D.C. this week. Joining me now is James Investment Research CIO Barry James. Uh, obviously, uh, Barry, the markets uh, anticipate are anticipating more and more that something's going to happen with respect to deal being uh, cobbled together. The Shanghai up more than 10 percent this year, up 3 percent today. The Shenzhen and China up even more. So even in China, there's a lot of anticipation that something positive is going to happen. Where do you handicap it? I, I agree with that uh, sentiment. Uh, two things. Number one, the president is not going to have as much uh, domestic success with a split Congress, so he's going to focus more overseas, and he needs some victories there. And the Chinese are either on the verge of or in a recession, so they need to uh, really boost their, themselves. And of course, they're the, we're, we take more from China than any other country, over $500 billion a year in imports from China. So they, they need to see that corrected. They don't want 25 5 percent uh, tariffs in any way, shape, manner, or form. And I think the stock market is, is gradually feeding this into the, the mix. Hey, Barry, there, there's three ways this can go, and I wonder if you can handicap the markets for us. There's the possibility of no deal, and then the U.S. kicks up the tariffs that it's got on China already and imposes more. There's the possibility of some kind of stalemate where we just kind of leave the tariffs in place but don't add any more. And then there's the possibility of a deal. How does the market react under each of those scenarios, no deal, stalemate, and deal? Uh, I think in terms of, uh, of no deal, the market would take that uh, um, fairly un unfavorably. Uh, I think it's already being built in uh, to some extent. Uh, so if that were to, to unfold and we have these new, um, you know, these new 25 percent tariffs, uh, that's just going to be awful for everybody from consumer through, uh, through the companies. Uh, in terms of them making a deal, uh, I think some of that has already been factored into the market but not all of it. So I think it would be a positive, at least initially, uh, for, for stocks. And if there's no deal, I think we just kind of keep treading water as we are right now in the market. Barry, uh, Jonas Ferris here. This auto part, this auto part of this tariff war is the part that scares me the most. I always see it as the path that could spread to Japan and Germany and make this a global problem. How do, like, what is the, per like, if we start doing tariff, we don't buy cars from China in the sense that they're like Chinese manuf like the Great Wall China car company and all that. We buy parts to assemble here or in Mexico or North America and then assemble cars from like Buick, Cadillac, whatever. Like what, what is the purpose of it? Like won't it just drive the price up to the consumer and then won't the auto companies need to then put tariffs on Japan so those prices are not lower than our American manufactured in China cars? And how does this like, I don't see how you get, how you make this work on any level. Like what's the story here with the, with the tariffs on cars? Yeah, um, I, I agree. You, you look at uh, General Motors, for instance, the tariffs were supposed to help them, and they're laying off people. Uh, we have, uh, you know, Lordstown here in Ohio. Uh, <laughs> a lot of people just lost their jobs. That's not, that's not really not funny at all. Uh, so uh, it does have an impact, uh, and it doesn't necessarily have the intended consequences that people would like. Uh, historically, from the stock market's perspective, when we had steel tariffs under uh, George W. Bush, the market then took that as a, a nosedive opportunity, right. and uh, that's that's a thing that is always in the back of people's minds. We should also, though, let people know, watching at home, in that last earnings report, General Motors made three billion dollars in America, zero internationally, <laughs> zero. They sold more cars outside this country, but all the profits came from America. And that's what Americans in the heartland are pissed off about, the fact that you made $3 billion here and you're still firing people in this country. Uh, General Motors better find a better way to explain that. Hey, it is earnings season, and a real big one's going to report in the morning. Walmart, uh, the fourth quarter results. So what are you expecting here? Uh, it, you know, it, it's, even, it's always anxious, by the way, Barry, when they report, but even more so after that disastrous retail sales report. 
uh, you know, again, it's in the discount area, so it's a, a little bit different than, than some of the other companies. Uh, but it is the bellwether. It is the, the one that we all look to. Um, we think that they'll be, they'll be fine in terms of their earnings. Uh, we do own some in our mutual fund, the Golden Rainbow. Uh, so it is, uh, you know, meeting the criteria of, of good earnings, not too expensive, and had been, you know, doing reasonably well in terms of uh, price performance. So uh, we don't really worry too much about their, their earnings, uh, what are coming out, although the retail side does, does concern us, and we'll keep an eye on that. All right. Thank you very much. Barry James, really appreciate it.